today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And a big thank you to Tim for starting us off with some music. I really appreciate it. And you guys, everybody's showing up as Kimberly Wilson, <laughs> or many people are, because I gave you my link. So my apologies. If you want your real name, <laughs> go ahead and just those three little dots in the upper right and go ahead and rename yourself. My apologies. I'm like, why are there so many of me here today? So a big welcome. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk about what we're going to do together today. And I'm really, really excited. I've been looking forward to this for a while. As some of you know, we had this scheduled for June 6th. And with everything that was going on in the world, I was like, we are postponing this because we need to focus on other things right now and what is super duper important. And so thank you to everyone who understood that and was patient and rejoined us today. I'm so, so grateful. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, chat a bit about everyday tranquility, okay? How do we find tranquility in the everyday and using the five TDJ tenants? Now, if you're like, what are those? You can find those. I put all sorts of resources for you over at KimberlyWilson.com slash blog. So super easy. Just head on over there. You'll get the worksheet for today, which I hope you'll be filling out. Those of you who are paper people, if not, maybe writing in your journal. So just kind of following along. And then the second thing we're going to do is chat about signature style. And that seems to really appeal to you guys. You know, it's one of those things that style, I feel like, has been part of the Tranquility Du Jour kind of community since Hip Trinkle Chick came out in 2006. And I remember in that book, I talked about how to take like a black cami and black leggings from your yoga class to into the world. And I think I gave five ideas. And I feel like ever since then, I've been on this mission of like, how do we make things easy? And how can we live in our workout wear, but not feel like we're living in workout wear? And, you know, now that we're so many people are working from home, and really, you're just seeing up here, like I've seen for sale zoom shirts, right? So things that will just help you look like a little more put together, even if you're wearing pajama bottoms. So anyway, we're going to talk about that. And I also have four amazing guests joining to share their tips. And you'll see Barbara, Melinda, Kelly and Hannah sharing a bit. And so that'll be later on in our hour. So please settle in. I just want to encourage you to grab a libation. I am having some Moroccan mint green tea. We'll be sipping it throughout because I'm going to be talking a lot. And also, if you would head on over into the chat box and share your name. Where are you tuning in from? I think Bea Trees may win the award with being in a layover en route to see her family in Spain, and she's in Madrid right now. So Bea Trees, thank you so much for joining in. My parents from Oklahoma and um, Tim working the controls. So if you need anything, just so you know, Tim is our co-host today, so he, is, he can help you out. And um, under participants, you would find Tim, co-host, and just contact him directly. And again, it's so weird seeing all um, you guys showing up with my name. So again, my apologies. I know you are your individual selves. So um, Stevie Finley, Finley from Oklahoma. Wow, what a treat. So let me just tell you a little bit, too, before we dive in and I say hello as I get so excited. Let me... Uh, move that. I just wanted to kind of mention, um, what is tranquility du jour? So in 1999, I started a yoga studio in, Tranquil, in Washington, D.C. called Tranquil Space. And then kind of since then, I've been like, my big thing was like, how do we take yoga off the mat? So my idea now is how do we take tranquility into the everyday? And so I offer events like this. This is our third one since kind of quarantine hit. And I'll continue to offer more. You know, typically we have our events on Sunday night, which are really lovely. I love connecting with you at the um, end of the weekend, start of the week. But there's something too about Saturday afternoon. I know it's afternoon here. Some people, it's morning. Some of you guys, it's evening. But you know, there's something about Saturday because um, at least for me, it kind of just sets the tone for the weekend ahead. So thank you for being here. And the idea too is, how do we come together as a community? I think because so many people are feeling isolated, um, you know, struggling, really struggling right now. And so my hope is that this just gives us a, a chance to come together and feel connected and also learn something and play, 
So whenever I think of play, like I, you know, I wrote like this is a lighthearted event. Like I want it to be fun and pleasurable for you. So that's kind of why in my reminder that I sent out today, I was like, surround yourself with things that make you happy. You know, whether or not it's like something yummy, like a, a really soft scarf or I've got here a snoring pug, which I will be showing you shortly because he's so adorable. He's double bow tied today because his aunt Sarah gave him a bow tie with pigs. So he's just like adorable. Of course, something to drink. Um, you know, I, I tend to have a few libations. So I've also got water you know, lotion, this beautiful rose water spray that Miss Carol brought me back from Italy. You know, it's just little things like this that, I don't know, just make life a little bit more pleasurable, right? So surround yourself with those things because I want you to be really comfortable for this hour. The other thing is if you can, close those tabs on your phone, um, on your computer, set your phone aside, and just see if you can dial in to really be present for this hour, giving it really a gift to yourself. Okay. Um, so again, if you would uh, say hello, where you're from, one word to describe what you're feeling right now, and I'll come over and uh, check in in a moment. For now, I just love, would you guys share, like, what are you drinking? So holding up, what is your beverage of choice right now? Some of you may be having mimosas, some of you tea. Oh, I love it, Julie. <laughs> Keep calm and carry on. And the idea too with brunch is like, you know, I think brunch is such a, uh, I don't know, such a luxurious thing. And so many of us haven't really been able to go out to dinner or do things like that for, or, or, or brunch or out to restaurants for a long time. There's one cafe here in DC that's recently reopened. You wear a mask the whole time. We sit outside. So it's really like, I mean, such a treat, this experience. And so that's why I was like, let's have a brunch, right? Where we're coming together, sipping tea virtually, connecting and learning. And again, just a reminder, we're going to go through everyday tranquility. I'm going to do a little bit of seated yoga and meditation. So just a smidgen because, you know, that's kind of one of the things we always do with Tranquility Is Your Gatherings. And then we'll move into signature style. I also want to tell you a little bit about, and I'll do this kind of midway, about a four-hour retreat that I'm leading next Saturday. So I've been doing virtual retreats for probably about four or five years. And now, of course, that's really kind of all you can do. And so Barbara, who's on the, on the um, call, and you will see her in a bit, she was like, oh, I, you know, I really want to talk like mid-year stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, that's perfect for our theme for the retreat. So we'll be doing a little bit of reflection, a little dreaming. Anyway, I'll talk about that in a moment. But that's kind of what we'll do. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some journaling questions. And you'll see at the bottom of the worksheet, again, if you're like, what worksheet? Head over to KimberlyWilson.com slash blog, and you'll find it along with some other downloads. And um, I'm going to just give you some things to kind of ponder and think about. So my hope is that this brunch will carry with you into your weekend. All right. So let me just head on over, say hello, see who's here today. Um, Beatrice, of course, from Madrid. We've got Kathy from Florida. Um, Quebec, you're, yes, you are hot. I'm sure Julie from California. Dubai, oh my gosh, Priscilla, wow. Um, London, Germantown, Maryland. Tim, West Virginia, my parents, Oklahoma, Betsy, Delaware. Oh my gosh. Okay. You guys are amazing. Um, Kathy's also drinking Moroccan mint tea. Oh, with a little bit of rose added. Okay. Now I'm very jealous. Um, and you know, those of you who are like, well, how is she doing that? Um, you know, sometimes what I'll do is add a rose tea to my green tea, but also when I was in Paris, and it's over on my counter, I'd show you. But, you know, you can buy these little rose infusions that you can add to cooking, or you can add to your beverages, or just to plain water. And then you've got a little bit of rose water to drink. Hello, Tammy from Seattle. You've got Dallas. Hello, you guys. Oh, my gosh. It's so great to see everyone here. I so appreciate it. 9 a.m., um, in bed with a new puppy and a copy of Gyps Gypsy Rose Black Tea. I love Gypsy Rose Tea. So wonderful. Thank you guys for being here today. So let's dive into what is everyday tranquility and how do we have more of it? Now, again, I also put over in the blog post a whole thing on everyday tranquility and that I um, thought that you may enjoy because, you know, 
I like printables. I like downloads and I just think it's really helpful. And so I have a whole PDF for you there. But what I'm going to be doing is talking through some of those and also giving tips based on the five tenants. How do we bring tranquility into our everyday? Because Lord knows we need it more than ever right now. Oh, and just a reminder, so you don't stay Kimberly Wilson forever, you go to those three dots in the upper right corner of your image, you can change your name and you will be your individual, individual beautiful self. Okay. So again, my apologies for that. So I sent you my link. <laughs> um, okay. So let me start with giving you the definition of tranquility. You know, because I think for so many people initially, they were like, well, tranquility, I mean, like you're like frazzled running around doing a bunch of different things. Like, how are you like Miss Tranquil? Okay, that's the thing. I strive for tranquility. It's funny, it's like this idea of like, I'm chasing tranquility, which doesn't sound very tranquil. But it's this idea of like, I'm looking to have more tranquility into my life, which can feel busy and full at times. So that's why I shifted the definition just a little bit. And I say the quality of calm, which is what Webster's Dictionary says, but I say within a full and meaningful life, right? Because it's one thing to just be running around and there's not like a, a purpose or an intention to it. You know, we've probably all kind of been there. And then there's another thing to feel like life is full, life is juicy, life is active, and yet I also have these pieces of tranquility woven throughout. Let me just tell you, nobody is tranquil 24-7. It is just impossible. Or, you know, possibly heavily medicated or in a um, crazy beautiful remote setting for a period of time, right? So I think oftentimes it's like tranquility is looked at as this, uh, oh, well, if I go to Bali on a yoga retreat, then I'll be tranquil. It's like, great, but how do we bring tranquility back into our everyday lives? Okay. And when I say heavily medicated, I mean like sedated, right? Because that's, you know, when we're just kind of flatlined, everything's fine. Like things are not always fine. And let's be honest, like right now, things are not necessarily fine. So what can we do to create a sense of uh, lu luxuriousness and um, also simplicity and ease. I think ease is the best word to describe tranquility in everyday life. So let's start with compassion. Okay, so this is the first tenet, and I think this one is really, really important. So I'm going to talk about how to find tranquility in your everyday, but through com the compassion lens. All right, so I have a few things that I've written down here for you. So remember, this is important. Remember, no one's perfect. And what really matters is our intention and effort. So, you know, I like to think that showing up is really half the battle. Actually, it's the majority of the battle, right? So knowing that they're having compassion with yourself and having compassion with others, because I think right now everyone is suffering, right? Um, no matter whether or not they're employed or not, um, you know, there's just so much going on. So the sense of compassion and acceptance is really important. Um, acknowledging accomplishments and small successes is a way to have a bit of tranquility. So little mini celebrations in your everyday, you know, so for example, a friend for my birthday gave me these, this rose infused chocolate, right? Dark chocolate. And so how can I like have a little nibble of that as a way to honor or acknowledge once I have done something that was on my list that was important to me. So a sense of compassion by acknowledging those small steps you are taking, no matter how small it may seem. The other thing with compassion is how can we make a difference? How can we really um, be present and give back to others, especially now? So thinking about volunteering, donating, um, awareness raising, and really doing all you can to support social and racial justice. Eat more plants. You know I'm going to say this, right? Um, even though I'm always like, Tim, I don't like vegetables. <laughs> even though, you know, it's like I'd rather have pizza and french fries. You know, I do think that they are very important and I do eat them every day. And, you know, it's one of those things of how can we infuse more into our lives. And I just recorded a podcast with um, 
uh, Melinda, who you're going to hear from in a bit, and you'll hear this podcast probably early fall, maybe late summer, but all about how do we infuse more plants into our lives, right? Because it's not easy, especially if you love French fries and pizza. Um, practicing self-compassion and treating yourself as you would a dear friend. Notice what you say to yourself and ask yourself, would I say that to anyone else? No. Then, of course, there's just sustainability in general, right? So we're thinking compassion for the environment, composting, going zero waste. I released a podcast in December that you guys may have heard, and it was um, all about kind of zero waste. Um, farmers markets, slow fashion, which we'll talk about when we get to signature style. And, of course, I'll just emphasize again, social justice. So that are some of my ideas, right, on compassion. And so if you, um, if you, like if that resonates with you, just thinking, okay, what is some way that I can add a bit more compassion into my life sporadically as you can, that would give me a little bit uh, more tranquility in the everyday. And I do think like starting with how you speak to yourself can be a really big one. Okay, so second, let's move into creativity. Okay, so with creativity, thinking about all those daily decisions that you have to make, right? And how can they be a way to express your creative side from hey, what you eat? You know, what I love is I've recently signed up for Daily Harvest and I get all these beautiful, colorful meals. Like one of them is a flatbread um, that is like kale and it's, it's, beautiful it's like purple kale on top and it's just like so pretty you know the colors right i think creativity can be expressed in what you eat definitely in what you wear which we'll talk more about with signature style how you communicate like are you a hand talker which i am i need to like sit on my hands um how you spend your time who you spend your time with um what do you write with like i you know, I think these are so pretty. These are beautiful. And yet I also will use this on a more regular basis, a pilot pen, because it's just super smooth. And then, of course, I'm all about Crayola markers, too, for, you know, whenever I'm writing kind of in my, like, smaller kind of notebooks and journals. Um, also, how you decorate your space, like how you set up. Um, and, you know, what you read, what you consume, these are all ways to be creative. And, you know, I have this in the tenants, and I just want to remind you that how we show up every day is our art, and each day really can be, can be a fresh canvas. So thinking about that, and we are all creative, let me just emphasize that. And one of the things we talked about in the TDJ Live from June 21st is Okay, can we commit to doing something every day that's creative for 10 minutes, whether or not it's doodling, embroidering, needle pointing, cooking, etc. So maybe if you weren't there or you haven't taken on that challenge yet, thinking about what that might be for you. All right, so the third tenet and the third way to weave more tranquility into the everyday, mindfulness. Okay, so the piece here with mindfulness, it's really all about presence, being in the present moment. And, you know, I think that's one thing that this time of the, of uh, really of our lifetime, right, with this pandemic has taught us is the importance of presence and really savoring. And honestly, I would say that's kind of what the Tranquility Du Jour lifestyle is all about, like the sense of savoring, these simple pleasures. So slowing down, simplifying, savoring, surrendering what you can't control. And I think that's been a really hard one for us. I mean, hello, myself included. It's like, when am I going to get to see live music again? Right? You know, it's like, when am I going to do X again? Something you used to do a lot. When am I going to do Y again? You know, those things that it's like, you miss, you know, when do I get to see my family again, right? So all these sorts of pieces, it's like, okay, that's great. That's important. I know these things are important. And yet, what do you have control over now? And so what can we do about that? Pausing to notice your thoughts, your feelings, and your physical sensations. And so when I say feelings, I mean your emotions. Like, would you describe yourself like Genevieve in, in uh, Quebec was like, I'm hot, right? You know, so that's, that is a physical sensation. 
And someone else may say, like, I'm a little sad, right? So that's an emotion. And then even mentally, it's like, wow, my mind keeps going back to that email I got yesterday that I just can't shake. Um, the other thing that I just want to encourage with this is to practice stop. Okay, stop is a mindfulness technique. And those of you who have worked with me in the past, you have heard this a lot. And stop stands for stop, take a breath, observe what's happening, and proceed with awareness. Okay, so the idea with that is just rather than operating from a sense of habit, we hit the pause button, we take a step back, and we have a pause, and we reflect. Do I want to respond, right, which is more conscious, or do I want to react, which is more unconscious? There's a beautiful quote, quote by Viktor Frankl, and if you don't know him, I highly recommend his book, Man's Search for Meaning. He's a Holocaust survivor, and he credits his ability to survive the Holocaust by finding a sense of meaning. Okay, so with this, it's like he's got this beautiful quote that says, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And within that space lies our growth and our freedom. Beautiful, right? So that is mindfulness in a nutshell and definitely contributes to everyday tranquility. Okay, so wellness. I mean, wellness, I feel like, is such an important piece. And it's gratitude. So thinking right now, like, what's one thing you are grateful for today? Meditation, eating well, journaling, sleeping, rest is so important. And I've heard from so many people, super vivid dreams and weird sleeping, either like not getting enough sleep, waking up a lot, you know, due to anxiety around everything that's going on or sleeping a ton, like just exhausted. And I just want to mention one thing about that is super common right now in particular. And it's like we are operating kind of in our fight or flight response. So our uh, systems are on hyper alert, overdrive. And that's exhausting, right? And so to just know if you need to sleep more than usual, it's normal and let yourself do it. And also if you're having crazy wild dreams, totally normal too. I'm hearing that from a lot of people. Of course, reaching out to others, critical, staying connected. That's why I'm offering events like this. And then exercise. Like I uh, At four o'clock, I have my online ballet class. I love it. I am doing like so many more classes than I used to when I had to like bike somewhere or walk somewhere and it had to be at a set time. And these are at a set time, but my life is way more open than it used to be. So it's really nice. So if you haven't checked out online offerings, I highly encourage it. The other thing too, that I just want to emphasize under wellness that I think is so important is setting up routines. And I just want to share this quote by Flannery O'Connor. She says, routine is a condition of survival. And that's one of the things that's been really kind of preached during this time is the importance of setting up routines, right? So that it also helps limit our decision making. And we do get what's called decision fatigue. And so what would it be like to actually have a morning routine, an evening routine, kind of a getting ready routine, the whole shebang? It really helps to just take away all those decisions. That's why Steve Jobs wore the same thing every day. That's why some people have the same thing for breakfast every day. They don't have to use up their decision-making power and um, energy on kind of some basics like that. Okay. And then the last thing I want to mention with wellness that is just so important, I think, and a lot of people are focusing on this right now is decluttering. So Decluttering too, like I spent yesterday just pulling together a lot of my paperwork, you know, it was like um, notes and ideas and bills and, you know, all this stuff that was kind of in a pile and it just felt, oh, and shredding some stuff and it just felt good. It was like liberating. So there's something really about clearing clutter that does contribute to tranquility. And then style, I'll just touch on this briefly because we're going to move into that in a moment. So this is like surrounding yourself with beautiful things. So the reason I'm only mentioning kind of this piece is because we're going to talk about signature style. And when I say beautiful things, I don't mean like fancy by any means. I just mean like 
you know, I'm obsessed with flowers. So I'm going to the farmer's market every week and picking up these beautiful lilies. I get a huge bunch of them. I'm, I'm like obsessed with plants. You probably know many people are. There's like plant babies and all sorts of like, you know, plant love and Instagram accounts and things like that out there that I think are really, really um, inspiring for people. And, you know, so it's like this idea of setting up your space and art, you know, I've got this like beautiful image up here. Um, you may have seen it on social media, but it's just of this gorgeous pig. I'll put it up on Instagram later. Um, and it's just like so beautiful. It makes me so happy. So thinking about like, what can you surround yourself with that feel um, uh, that would bring you a sense of tranquility. Also trinkets from travel, right? Because we're not traveling like we used to. And you know, there's something about travel that I feel like is adventurous, exotic, and also really um, helps you kind of like pause and think a bit, you know, seeing a bigger picture. And so maybe you have a postcard, you know, that you have framed on your desk or something that will just remind you. So that's like style. And that's probably really more kind of um, style with regard to kind of your home or your work environment. And again, I'll talk style a little bit more in a moment. Okay, so I'm curious if you have any thoughts or anything I may have missed from everyday tranquility under compassion, uh, creativity, wellness, mindfulness, and of course, style. And we will talk more about style in a moment. And so come into a comfortable seat and feel free to share any of that over in the chat box. Um, love kind of seeing what you guys have to say or share. But in the interim, just come to a comfortable seat. And I'm just going to do a little bit of movement for you before we move on into the next part of our session together today. So coming to a comfortable seat, I'm going to scoot back. Excuse me, Gizzy. Oh, and here, by the way, is Mr. Gizzy. He's taking a nap. But do you see he was gifted this super cute pink uh, or pig bow tie? And then I just added it to his polka dot one. And as you can see, he's just very exhausted. He, he really, he sleeps 23 hours a day. There you go, sweetie. And um, he was half on my chair, half off. So I wanted to scoot back so he wouldn't fall off. So come to a comfortable seat. And I'm just in a chair. So just coming to a comfortable chair. And inhale and reach those arms out to the sides all the way up. And interlace your hands above the head, reach up. And then exhale and crescent over to your left side. And then back up. And then over to your right side. And back up and let's twist. So bring your right hand to your left knee, left arm behind you. And take a gentle gaze over that back shoulder. And then back to the center and other side. Twisting. And back up. Now one thing too, is I feel like people have not been getting in as much movement because we're not commuting in the same way that we used to. So I've noticed that hips are pretty snug. I mean, mine in, in particular. So go ahead and bring your ankle onto your knee. And I will pull this down so you can see. So I've got ankle on knee. Now, some of you, this is going to be like, uh-uh, that is not happening. So for you, maybe just cross your ankles instead. So I've just got them crossed like this, okay? Otherwise, ankle to knee. Now, this is a seated pigeon. And I mean, I feel this already, right? So some of you may also already be feeling this. And then coming forward. Now, if you want to come deeper, you go all the way down. And then keep this foot flexed. So the one that's on top, keep it flexed. And, you know, one thing, maybe during your next Zoom meeting, see if you can come to a seat like this. And then while you're talking or while you're typing, you're getting a nice hip opener. Again, some of you may be more flexible. You may be all the way down, others on their elbows, and then others all the way up, like just breathing through it, okay? So let's shift, and we'll do the other side. Again, this is called seated pigeon. So good. It's, um, it's, quite, it's quite intense. And then folding forward. Maybe elbows to knee, 
and ankle or hands all the way down. And then just notice your breath here. So deep inhale and deep exhale. And see if you can kind of soften as you drop just a little bit deeper into the pose. So I find sometimes when I come into poses that are intense, I'm like clenching, right? But what if you softened a little bit? Can that help you drop a little bit further, a little more comfortably? Beautiful. Nice. Come right back up. Release. And we're just going to do one more. So bringing the left arm over the right arm, and you can put hands to elbows or hands to shoulders or palms of the hands together. Okay, so I've got one arm on top of the other, and you can bring hands to shoulders or palms of the hands together. Lift elbows to shoulder height, and then move those elbows into a circle. Other direction. And release, woo! Let's do the other side. So I'm bring my right arm on top, bend. You can bring hands to shoulders or palms of the hands together, lift up. And move those elbows into a circle. And then other direction. Just notice what are you feeling in your body right now? Release, shake it out. Woo! and bring hands onto your thighs. And then we're just gonna take a few moments just in a seated position to notice kind of what's going on internally. Eyes can be closed or open. And just take a moment to breathe in fully through the nose. See if you can feel the belly, ribs, chest, belly, ribs, chest. And then exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Again, inhale belly, ribs, chest, exhale, chest, ribs, belly. Take a few more of these on your own and notice when your mind wanders, see if you can bring it back to this moment, this experience. Take a big inhale through your nose. Exhale through the mouth. And let those eyes flutter open. Beautiful. So, you know, the thing about just taking, I mean, what was that? Maybe five minutes? Just taking a few moments during your day to just pause and move and breathe. Our breath is so, so powerful. So I just want to remind you about that. And that is a wonderful way to bring more tranquility into the every day. Now, before we transition to style, I just want to do a quick check-in to see how everyone's doing. So if you can just over in the chat box, let me know how you're feeling, anything you may have noticed. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about next weekend's virtual retreat. Okay, so the virtual retreat, it is half day. It's going to be 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're going to break for lunch, so it'll be two hours and two hours. And the idea here is I want to review the year, okay? We've had six months, six interesting months, right? I want to review it, kind of tie it into our year's dreams, and then do a little designing about what's to come with an eye on healthy habits and coping skills. Okay, so of course this is gonna involve some creativity, some yoga, we're gonna start probably with a yoga practice, mindfulness and journaling. Okay, so the idea is I want you to leave with clarity on the first half of your year, an action plan, and inspiration to make your days meaningful. And I promise that no matter kind of where we are, and actually, if you read Man's Search for Meaning, you will get great ideas on this, but we can find meaning within what is happening and ideally really kind of help ourselves to build resiliency. So that's what this retreat is going to be all about. You're going to get a retreat manual. It's about 40 pages, um, a private Facebook group, and a link 
meaning a replay that you can watch again and again and again. So if you are interested in joining, if you sign up by midnight tonight, you'll get a bonus of a grounding meditation practice. And basically what this is, is it's what I do every time I'm like, okay, it's Monday morning, I am frazzled, here is my go-to. And it's just like a 12-minute practice to regroup because I think right now we need grounding more than ever. You can find out more information about that over at KimberlyWilson.com slash blog. It's one of your many links. And um, just let me know, of course, if you have any questions. All right. So, oh, and I wanted to mention too that a portion of all the proceeds are going to benefit um, Higher Heights for Education. And they're building the political power of black women and creating the environment for black women to run, win, and lead. And they have really cool online um, events. So follow them on Facebook, Higher Heights for America. Great. Okay. Signature style. Are we ready to dive in? And of course, yeah, if you have any questions about virtual retreat, please don't hesitate to ask. And again, KimberlyWilson.com slash blog has all this for you. Okay. So the next piece with signature style that we're going to dive into, uh, there's another link for you over at KimberlyWilson.com slash blog. And this is going to take you to what I'm going to talk all about, which is kind of my capsule wardrobe whenever I think signature style. Okay, so I've got some pieces behind me that I'll show in a moment. But I wanted to mention an article that came out right when the pandemic hit in the Washington Post. And it was all about how clothes tell a story. So Robin Given, she wrote, fashion is a form of communication that is both intimate and aloof. Without ever uttering a word, you stand behind your message because you are in fact wearing it. Clothing is an eloquent form of communication. So interesting, right? So that might be something that I feel like for so many people who are like Zoom, you know, on Zoom only, you know, it can be like, oh, I just really have to dress up from the top up or I may not even have to dress up at all. And it's like kind of missing that connection to like, what is our story? What's the story that we're telling? And so just an interesting thing to kind of keep in mind. And as we think about signature style, I want you to share some examples or some ideas that might be helpful as you think about your own, because we all have it just like we are all creative. So there's another woman who wrote a book called The Psychology of Fashion, and she's a behavioral psychologist. Carolyn Mayer, M-A-I-R. And she says mood and clothing are interconnected. So, you know, just like we're not moving as much because we're not necessarily commuting, you know, for a lot of people, like at least in the city, we would walk to work or bike or you walk to your car and you get in your car. And now it's like we just roll out of bed and work, right? So it's also the same thing of like getting dressed up. It's like we're missing that part. And clothing and mood interconnected. I just thought that was really interesting. So for your own signature style, think of a signature piece that you have or that you like to showcase. So one thing that came to mind to me immediately as mine is red lips. And this is a book that a friend of mine, Patricia, got for me, Red Lipstick, and Ode to a Beauty Icon. And there was an interesting article in the Post, too, about when red lipstick came out, how it was a big thing in the feminist movement. And it was all about, like, uh, power and control. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I love that. So red lips, that could be a signature piece, right? It could be a particular scent, like a particular perfume. So here's Tranquillité, and this is what I created in France. So this is like kind of my thing, right? For you, what would be your signature scent? There used to be a girl who worked at the studio years ago, and every time I would see her, we'd hug, and I was like, oh my God, you smell so good. And it was this this um, oil from Bath and Body Shop. It was like amazing. And so, you know, for years I've worn that too. I, I, sweet musk, that's what it's called. And, you know, it's just like every time I smell that, I think of her. So could that be your signature piece? Maybe it's a scarf, like something that you always are wearing. Maybe it's oversized sunglasses. Like I've got these that I picked up for like $5 and, uh, in Pittsburgh last year before a Garth concert and um, love them, right? So maybe it's a uh, leopard print. Maybe it's like a leopard print coat or something and that's your signature piece. The other thing that can help in addition to choosing kind of like a signature piece or a signature part of who you are is to find a muse. 
So there's Audrey Hepburn, right? Love her. Jackie O, Beyonce, um, Rachel Zoe. I mean, there are so many. Okay, I'm not even going to start naming them. But these are just the four that kind of came right um, off the top of my head as I was thinking about brunch. So for you, it's like, who would be kind of a muse? And it might be a blend of Beyonce meets Audrey Hepburn meets Rachel Zoe, right? So you kind of create your own concoction. And are you kind of more in the classic look, a modern, eclectic, bohemian, or kind of more like trend forward, like whatever is popular this season? Um, and also keep in mind, you know, when you're thinking signature style, your personality, your body type, and your lifestyle, right? So these are all different pieces that I think really contribute to how it is that we express our signature style. Oh, Shannon, so just saw over in the chat box, I miss wearing lipstick with mask. Okay, let me just tell you. Let me show you, actually, the inside of my mask. Oh, I've recently washed it, so it's not too bad, but there's always red, there's always red lips in there. And the reason is, is like, um, you know, if I am walking around, but say I go and I sit somewhere where you're outside and you need to take it off to eat or, you know, something along those lines, um, or I get inside to like my office, then I take it off. And so then I will put lipstick on for say a zoom meeting. And so then when I put it back on, you know, believe it or not, it doesn't smear. Like I don't come out with like red lips all over my face, but I hear you. I hear you. Oh, Tammy Grace Kelly. Oh, beautiful. abso freaking lootly. Thank you. She is a, yeah, mask full of lipstick. Oh, and by the way, this mask is created by Mama Wilson in Oklahoma. And this is on the Tranquility website for anyone who's interested. Leopard, um, Damask, and Chambray. So the other thing I wanted to mention is the importance of slow fashion, which of course is the opposite of fast fashion. And the idea, it kind of stemmed from the slow movement, which is slow food, and it advocates for manufacturing in respect to people, environment, and animals. So just important, you know, as you're thinking about your own signature style, um, what are the new pieces you want to um, accumulate and do they have good ethics behind them, ideally? Okay, what is a council wardrobe? So I'm gonna show you some things and talk you through a little bit about um, the, the uh, PDF that I have over on the page, which is like, okay, how do I pair? Like, this is my uniform I wear all the time. And so the idea with a capsule wardrobe and a uniform is like, so that you don't have to think too much about what you're going to wear. Now, I make it easy because I wear mainly black and I mainly have for about 15, 20 years. Now, I know that's not for everyone by any means, but it's really easy for me and everything matches. Um, you know, so for you thinking about, okay, what are my signature 10 to 40 pieces and do I need the rest? And I think right now you're probably recognizing um, that there's a lot of stuff you're not wearing and you may not need even when we do and if go back to the office. Okay, so let me show you a few ways in which I kind of work with my um, uniform. Okay, so this is my uniform per se, right? This is, um, and I'm just going to move this so that you can see a little bit better. So, and what it is, is capri leggings and two-in-one fitted top. This is actually our best-selling piece. And everything I'm going to show you, really, other than some accessories, are from Tranquility. Okay, oh, and at the end of today, you will get a little discount code, too, for, to do a little shopping. So, this is, like, my thing. Um, it's so comfortable and, you know, you can wear it with like fun little heels and you can dress it up. Um, but, you know, you may be like, okay, well, that's great. But what, what if I need to go to the office or I need to look professional on Zoom? Well, then you can just throw on, for example, a blazer. Voila, right? And then you kind of look a bit more professional, particularly, say, if you add a scarf. You know, this is actually what I've been wearing a lot is I just add a scarf to my overall look on the um, calls. And, you know, again, people are just seeing here up. So it doesn't really matter that I'm in leggings. But I do wear this to the office also. Now, of course, you can throw on and you probably will see this in that PDF. You can throw on things like a little T-shirt over it. Right. And then I would tie it. 
Another thing is this piece, which is the long sleeve wrap tunic. I think this piece and the long sleeve wrap tunic are our best sellers, but this just feels like to me like a big blanket. So you know how I mentioned, have something that feels really cozy and comfortable for you for today's call, just because I like to swaddle. I like to wrap myself in things. And you'll find on the website that there's tons of ways to wear this, but I just feel so like secure in it. I love it. It's like, it's like a, it is like a big blanket. Now, a couple other pieces that are great, and again, I just layer on top of what I'm wearing, is this little dress. It's the sleeveless swing tunic, and, you know, of course, I can wear my heels with it, flip-flops, etc., but in the winter, I will add tall boots, and then my leggings kind of act like tights. So again, this is all working off like two pieces. Another piece that I like, and um, very Diane Van Fosterberg, right, the, uh, the um, wrap dress. And so this is a great piece, too, because, again, you can kind of dress up. You can say you've got your exercise wear, like this is what I'll wear for my ballet class today. But then say I'm going out and about, and then I just add a little wrap dress over it, and I'm super comfy. And so the piece that I, you know, just wanted to show, it's just these two, right? So these are my two. This is like my little uniform. And, of course, we've got this little leopard print scarf, which is really kind of fun as a fun additional layer or touch for anyone who, you know, again, just wants to fancy themselves up in front of the computer before their Zoom call and they're still in their pajamas, Okay. So these are the pieces I wanted to show. Also, my mom makes these, which they're on the website, and um, just fun little uh, mat bag carriers. And, you know, this is a piece of signature style. It's funny, Kelly, you'll hear from in a moment, taught a yoga class on 4th of July in the park. So I realized I show up with my leopard print mat. It was a little much. Um, my leopard print bag, and then inside of here is a leopard print mat. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's the one leopard thing too many. Um, but yeah, so these are just some ideas on ways to showcase your own signature style, but without having to have a massive wardrobe. And the thing is, too, is I'm all about comfort. I'm all about ease. It's all machine washable. One other thing I wanted to mention is during the winter months, or say you're going someplace that's super air conditioned, maybe your home, your office, I will take over-the-knee socks and then add those to my leggings because clearly there's skin showing here and then throw on the clogs and then I'm all set for full coverage and feeling like nice and warm and cozy. All right, so signature style in a nutshell. And again, just a few pieces that can help kind of bring together, like what is the signature look kind of or feel that you're going for and that feels super duper comfortable because it's all about comfort all right so and again too it's about dressing up or down hello flip-flops hello clogs okay so and the last thing i want to mention is and then we're going to hand it on over to melinda to start is a few things from like getting ready in front of the camera um because somebody wrote to me and donna if you're on the call today she was like, oh, your skin's so great. Like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, my God, you have no idea. I have rosacea. I have eczema. I have really bad, irritated skin. It's the camera I use and a few little supplies. So I just wanted to share. Super goop. I don't know if you can see that. This is like a godsend. You can't really see it. But anyway, just Google. There you go. Super goop. What's great about this is it's sunscreen. It is a coverage. And it's also a moisturizer. When I was told about that, I was like in love. Lip lipstick from France. I'm almost out of it, so they need to lift the travel ban so I can go back. Um, wet and Wild. So these, this is super cheap. You can get it at CVS. Volumizing um, Eyes uh, Mascara. This is a vegan liquid jet eyeliner. And I'll put all this over in the show, over, not in the show notes, so I don't have them, but over on the blog post. And, you know, this, which I just love, it's just a liquid eyeliner, vegan. And then, you know, a little green coverage because that helps to tone down the red rosacea. And then this is 
I, sh- I, um, I, I shadow that's white that somebody gave me years ago that she picked up in Italy and I've been using. It's probably quite expired, but I love it. And, you know, there's something about white that I think just helps kind of eyes pop. So those are kind of my pieces. And Donna, you had asked, so I wanted to be sure to answer your question about like, how do you get camera ready? Easy peasy, all vegan, cruelty free, and all really reasonably priced. I think the most expensive item is this, and it was maybe 30 or $35. So yeah. So thank you guys. Okay. That's like signature style in a very quick nutshell. I hope that was helpful. Now I want to hear from a few of our beautiful ladies who um, have a wonderful style and wonderful ways of kind of pulling things together. So we're going to start with Melinda, and I'm just going to read a brief bio of hers while Tim kind of pulls her up and gets her ready. Oh, and Melinda, you've heard from on the podcast before. Uh, Melinda revels in all things creative while being kind to the earth. You'll find her dabbling in all manner of creative endeavors, surrounded by fabrics, paper, paint, and glue. You most often find her wielding a camera, shopping thrift and vintage stores, digging in the dirt in the garden, stirring a pot on the stove, or choreographing a dance, all while dressing comfortably and chic in her tranquility. All right, let's hear from Melinda. Hi, everybody. Um, I, I'm one of those fortunate people who doesn't have to get uh, dressed up too often for calls, but um, it's e- very easy for me to because I'm always pretty comfortable in my what I'm wearing anyway. So one of my favorite pieces is the um, skirt dress, which I'm wearing here, and I usually put it over uh, a shirt, a top. So this one is uh, as a tank top. So they have coverage, but then if I feel like I need to be a little bit more professional or it's a little more formal meeting, I'll throw on either a blazer or this a little more structured um, sweater. This is uh, the boyfriend sweater that then it looks, you know, because you're seeing from the it looks very formal, even though I'm super, super comfortable. And then another way I like to wear this um, particular dress is I have a an assistant here, my, uh, my dress form, Betty. <laughs> She's wearing, a, this is one of my favorite pieces. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same dress that um, I have on. And um, I just layered over a long sleeve blouse and it just, it changes the look completely. And it's a much more formal. And I wear this often to the office when I was going to the office. And if you change the top, people don't even realize you're wearing the same dress. You could wear the same thing multiple days, just changing your top. And it looks like a whole different outfit. So that's what, one of the reasons I love being able to have a capsule wardrobe that's super, super comfortable and super versatile. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we've got Hannah next. So Hannah helps emerging wellness brands get clear on their goals and creates comprehensive marketing plans to help reach them. She's obsessed with cats. You'll see them a lot in her Instagram. Uh, Traveling and gardening, you'll also see that in her Instagram. She had a flair for style from a young age and now loves weaving. Comfort with style with the Tranquility line. Find her on Instagram at Hannah, M-O-N-G-I-A-T. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, Hi, everyone. I have um, also been fortunate enough that I don't necessarily have to dress up a lot for work, and I have always worked from home. So um, I wanted to share kind of what I'm doing currently in this interesting pandemic time and then um, kind of what my always work from home uniform has been. So I'm loving the wrap dresses. Um, Speaking of clothing and mood Kimberly. So I love the, um, the wrap dresses. I have the three quarter length sleeve and then this is the cap sleeve. And I'm finding that they're just really lovely for boosting my mood. I just feel dressed up and kind of fancy, but super comfortable. And then typically kind of what my, my uniform is Um, and has been actually for quite a few years now. So love the leggings from Tranquility and the boyfriend tank. 
So that's kind of always my base. And the clothing is such great quality. They last for years and years. And then what I love to throw on top is the wrap, the long sleeve wrap tunic. And you can wear that so many different ways. Like Melinda said, you can wear it multiple days in a row. People don't even really realize it's the same piece. And then the versatile vest, which I just love for the summertime when it's a little bit warmer out. And then it's just so fun to accessorize and dress things up with scarves or fun shoes. Um, I have leopard print shoes on today, although you can't see them. So fun leopard print shoes or scarves, um, you know, and fun purses and things like that when we were going out more. But um, yeah, I just find tranquility so lovely to go from being at home and then out and about when we were out and about a little bit more. Thank you, Hannah. And yeah, the thing is, it's like, how can we be comfortable, right? It's like, how can we feel, be comfortable, but also feel pulled together? Um, so beautiful. Thank you. Now, Miss Barbara. Um, okay. So Barbara has been on the podcast twice. She is Tranquility Connoisseur. Um, she's been wearing it since 2007. So she goes way back and personalized her day book since 2017. So you may have heard from her or listened to that podcast because she is all about the uh, day book. And when she's not whipping up herbal beauty products in her studio apothecary, she stays busy designing large-scale knowledge solutions for global audiences, producing weeks online, global dialogues every year. She's been a guest on the podcast twice and is sharing a couple tips for dressing for the camera. Thanks, Kimberly. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm here today to say... Everybody on this call and in the world who's ever on a Zoom call should have at least one pewter item in their wardrobe. Um, I know they're on super sale. And if you are on video and want to look good, even if you have as much black in your wardrobe as Kimberly does, because I sure do, um, pewter is your color. Um, so online, you can see all kinds of things about wearing jewel tones and stuff on video. Um, and I just want to point out that we are not in a camera studio when we're on Zoom and we're not having makeup artists and all the people who are making us look great. And Kimberly, you always look great, but I know you've got a special camera. For the rest of us, pewter is the color. Um, I picked up pewter and I, I do this for a living. So when I picked up the pewter uh, before COVID came, um, I bought it for my home wear. You know, like I got a tray tunic and a wrap dress to wear like as a nightgown and a bathrobe, truly. But as soon as I was on the camera eight hours a day with my colleagues coaching people to be on shows like this with a global audience and global speakers. So every shade of skin tone and every kind of lighting home setup, I needed to find something that would work all the time, no matter what time of day it was or what apparatus I was on. So. My uniform right now is my tray tunic on backward because the tray tunic forward is just too much skin for a corporate setting. So you wear it backward. You never see a bra strap. Your arms are always covered nicely and you always look fabulous no matter who you are. I've recommended this look to so many people and gray just always looks good. Remember, you're not dressing for a pe people. You're dressing for a camera that is not always forgiving. The second item that I have on rotation is my wrap dress, my gray, sorry, a pewter wrap. It wears forward or backward. It never shows too much. It always looks good. Um, and I can always wear my signature necklace. I always have a, a necklace that I, I wear. Um, and I just want to say, if you're going on an interview or you're um, giving a presentation, whether it's to your PTA or to your dog group or whatever, and you want to command attention, don't wear black. Um, everyone knows Kimberly looks great in black, but pewter will give you the right saturation for every skin tone. Um, it's the right amount of contrast with your back wall. Um, you don't need special camera to make pewter look good on you. Um, black will often accentuate uh, shadows, and so you'll look tired. Pewter doesn't do that. Um, it also 
uh, blends nicely with your skin so you don't get the, the heavy contrast, which is hard for the camera. Um, and I'll just wrap up with, um, again, you want to look smooth and you want to have a nice frame. And that is why I have pewter on rotation. And um, again, you, it's not going to look, if you're like, gray doesn't look good on me, it's not about natural light anymore. It's about making the camera um, do you justice. So um, pewter is my go-to since I don't have a dedicated makeup artist, I don't have a dedicated videographer, and I don't have a dedicated post-production team who can fix all of the problems with bleeding reds and oranges or greens that are making me look a little under the weather. So go for pewter. It's on sale. Thanks, Kimberly. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, it's funny. They always say do not wear black on camera, right? Like if you're on TV or whatever, but I just, I can't, I can't not, but yeah, it is, you know, and everyone has to find their color, right? That works for them. Um, Kelly, Kelly Tobin is a corporate recruitment manager by day, yoga teacher, wellness coach by night who lives in tranquility, originally from Boston. Her DC family includes a recently adopted beagle named Watson, who's freaking adorable, two cats, Razzie and Patches. Super obsessed with her new Peloton and making healthy quarantine creations in the kitchen. You can follow her at Kelly Tobin Offerings for virtual yoga and wellness offerings and inspiration. Kelly. Thanks so much, Kimberly, and uh, great job, ladies, before me. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to share my um, Tranquility fave look, and I'll keep it under two minutes because I know we're getting right up to the time. Um, but yes, as a full-time recruitment manager by day, and then, you know, um, also almost like a separate full-time job, yoga teacher, wellness coach, uh, career coach lately, um, during the rest of my time, it's almost like another full-time job. So I stay really, really busy, and I need basically to put one thing on in the morning that I can just easily transition, like Supergirl, kind of just take something off and be ready for the next thing. Um, so especially if I'm teaching a yoga lunch class. Uh, but for my day look, especially again when I'm interviewing and I need to look professional because I have candidates on video, um, you know, I definitely chose the versatile vest as Hannah was sharing before. I have it um, wrapped up kind of as a cape or a shawl. And um, you can kind of see it here. I can also adjust my camera a little bit. Um, but underneath I have the two-in-one noir fitted uh, fitted. Um, long sleeve. I just have the sleeves bunched up. Um, but it, I just love the comfy, as you were saying, Kimberly, kind of the swaddled feeling of the two in one. And um, it just is really like so cozy. And also, all I have to do, right, to transition from interviewing candidates, right, to teaching yoga is take off the necklace. Um, Take off the vest, basically, then I'm ready to teach. And I have, um, you know, the cool factor. I love wearing the back like that. So when you're teaching, everyone can kind of see that um, cool thing they're doing with sports bras these days that people a lot of times, you know, don't get to see. So, you know, there I am. I'm ready to teach. I will also add that I think the two-in-one works really well for um, women with curves. So basically, I think that kind of shows them off. So I'm excited about, about putting this on because it makes me feel very feminine and kind of sexy. So um, yeah, I just love this top. And of course, because I have to be a rule breaker, look behind me, there's some more looks. We're supposed to stick to one, but <laughs> I'm not wearing them. And you can just see that I love the two-in-one cami. And I also love the Cardi wrap. So I'm excited about the sale and I'm going to dig in and, and buy a whole bunch of stuff later on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's so funny. This was, really wasn't supposed to be a tranquility infomercial and I feel like it kind of turned into it, but you know, the, with just like sharing, cause we're all wearing tranquility, but the idea is like with your signature style. And I think now more than ever, we need comfort, right? We've got to be comfortable. And, um, you know, as Kelly and Barbara mentioned, the colors are all on sale because I'm phasing them out. So they're all on sale in our 
12 bestsellers. And you can find that at, at tranquility.com slash sale. There's a link in the show notes. Um, the show notes meaning KimberlyWilson.com slash blog. But, um, you know, the idea is like, how can you think about like, what is your signature piece? What is it that you really want to kind of showcase to the world um, and show up? And one little thing, this is just a silly example, but I've been, you know, growing my bangs out for a while, right? So it's like a, a fun barrette, you know, rather than I usually have and I'm just looking for it. Oh, yeah, a little bobby pin, you know. So um, just little things that you can do from, you know, flowers in your home to, uh, you know, a fun teacup that just feel like this is my signature. So kind of asking yourself what yours is. And I'm going to give you a couple of questions over in um, the, the notes. I'll put these in the blog post, but I'm going to share them with you now because I want you to do a little reflection on kind of what are some takeaways, right, from today's experience? Like, what are some ideas on everyday tranquility that you are excited to try or incorporate? Or some ideas on signature style that you're like, okay, I'm going to rock the red lips under my face mask and still get out and about. It was funny, we were eating dinner for my birthday. We went to a restaurant for the very first time. And, um, you know, of course I took my mask off to eat and a woman walked by and, um, on her way out and she said, I just am impressed that you have lipstick and a mask. And I was like, well, why don't people just put lipstick on and then put the mask over it? Um, but I thought that was funny that it impressed her. <laughs> so yeah, just know that you're going to have lipstick and the mask and it's okay. Um, also, let me give you these questions, and I also want to give you the code for you to save 20% off on everything regularly priced at tranquility.com, and the code is very easy, all caps, TDJ Brunch. Now, it won't give you um, discount on the sale because the sale is already 25% off, and again, you can find that on the sale page, which is right at the top, but you get 20% off everything else including some books and face masks and uh, things along those lines at tranquility.com using TDJ Brunch. Okay. Thank you, Tim. That was very efficient. So my journal prompts for you and things to kind of think about over this next, well, over the weekend, really, that I would really encourage you is number one. Oh, and while I'm sharing these, if you would put in the chat box, maybe one takeaway from today's experience. Maybe it's like, I'm going to hit the farmer's market and get me some flowers. Or it may be, I'm going to add a rose to my tea, right? Or it could be, oh, why am I wearing uncomfortable things to work from home? Like, why don't I wear things that stretch? Like all of the Tranquility has 5% spandex. Oh, and it's made, it's made, uh, we didn't even mention this, but eco-friendly fabrics, right? And it's locally sewn. So it's super slow fashion. Um, but for you, it's like, what is it that would be just super comfortable and feel good, right? Um, so number one, how can I infuse more tranquility into my everyday? Number two, what is my signature style? Like if somebody were to describe you, and there's a quote that I'm going to say, I'm going to put out on Instagram tomorrow. It's basically, it's um, a summary, but it's Rachel's own. It's like, you know, style is what, um, is what's said about you before, like anyone even meets you, right? It's just kind of like, if people walk into your space, they know, like they know something about your personality or they see your outfit, they know something about your personality. And then number three, what pieces would work for my capsule wardrobe, right? So I showed you what my uniform is and how I um, add to it. And for you, what would that be? Like, would it be, you know, um, all pewter, you know, as Barbara like loves or kind of what would it be that would allow you to just feel like, ah, this is easy. This and this mixes and matches because a capsule wardrobe is all about having pieces that are versatile and mix and match. Like I like easy peasy. That's why I'm all black. Easy peasy. Okay. So these are your journal prompts. I'll put them over on the blog. So never fear if you're like, I didn't capture or catch them. But again, infusing more tranquility into your everyday signature style and what pieces would work for your capsule wardrobe. Okay, so the um, last thing too, I just want to remind everyone is um, if you sign up for the virtual retreat by tonight midnight, I'm going to send you a bonus, which is a grounding meditation. 
really lovely. And it's okay if you can't join us live, you're going to get the video recording. And um, if you can join us live, I think you get more from the experience. But if you can't, you'll still get the whole experience and be able to do it on your own. All right, so I'm just going to head on over into the chat box real quick before I say goodbye. And also, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those. And again, a big thank you to the lovely Hannah, Melinda, Kelly, and Barbara for sharing kind of their take on signature style. I just really, I love it. And it was fun to see. I'm like, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about wearing the tray tunic worn backwards. And some of these pieces that they've mentioned, I've actually pulled the pieces from the website, so I'll get them back up. And tray tunic and versatile vest are two that had been mentioned today, and I'll get those back up. Um, I've been trying to limit things just to like, you know, decision fatigue. I didn't want people overwhelmed. Uh, okay, so yes, and like, it's all about attitude and being positive. I agree. Um, barrettes. Yes. Eggplant dress. Five years old. It is Melinda. Yes. Eggplant always comes and goes and sells out. Um, let's see. Inspired to get some great red lipstick. Oh, one red lipstick, Diane, I wanted to mention. Um, Cause the one from France, it's like, okay, you're not going to go to the Monoprix, which is like their target and, and grab this. I mean, a, you're not allowed in their country right now, but B, you know, it's just not easy, right? Or Maite, you can go because you're in France. And the name of this lipstick is 421 La Authentique. It is so lovely, but we can all get this one. And this is also a vegan brand or this is supposed to be cruelty free, it's Stila. And it's the one that AOC wears. So I think it's amazing. And it's called Besos, which is kisses mwah, in Spanish. So this is a really great red, Diane, I highly recommend. And it's matte. So uh, beautiful. Inspired to work on my wardrobe, stretch breaks during the day. Love that. Beautiful teacup. Oh, yeah. Um, takeaways are more yoga stretches and more pewter. Who knew? I love it. Barbara, you have like transformed people into pewter. Mama getting her tranquility wardrobe organized. Capsule wardrobe, Lara. Yes. Bring more creative things to my office at work. Yes. Now, oh, now that you're back. Okay. Plants. Plants are everything. I love plants. Um, I actually, I'm obsessed. I, I would have this whole place filled with plants if I could. Um, even though they say succulents are easy, don't be fooled. Um, so if you get those and you're like, oh, I can't do them, get something really easy, easy like a pathos, P-A-T-H-O-S, because they are just, like I'm looking around, I have them everywhere, and they, they just hang lots and lots of vines. Um, styled in every day. Movement breaks, Yamali. Hello, Yamali. Movement breaks and pewter. Um, signature style that you didn't even realize. Yes, Tammy. 10 minutes of watercoloring every day. I love that. Uh, virtual dance class. You need the vest. Julie, I'll get that back up. It's called the versatile vest and there's a lot of ways to wear it. Um, no monoprix in your small town, Maite, I know, but you can get your little self into Paris, right? And uh, check out the monoprix. If you guys ever get to France, you have to hit the Monoprix. It is so lovely. And I and love it. Gracias, de nada. And love these gatherings to connect, Hannah. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much. And thanks for hanging in there. I'm sorry we went 11 minutes over. I feel like I could have just gone and gone and gone. So I will let you get on with your Saturday. And I will put some of these resources, I'll add, over to the KimberlyWilson.com slash blog post. And you can find those there. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Kimberly at KimberlyWilson.com. Oh, yeah, and the online book club. Thank you, Kelly. We just finished White Fragility. Oh, my freaking goodness. It was so good. I highly recommend it if you have not read it. And then the second one we're reading right now is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And I'm going to put some questions over there this weekend. And that's all on our Facebook Insiders group. And there's links to that. Um, everywhere. And if you can't find it, let me know. But it's a great book so far. I'm about 40% through and loving it, loving it. So yes, please join and follow along with the book club. Thank you, Kelly. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much. It was a treat to be with you. I will have a recording of this available soon. Oh yeah, I'm just like, we are recording, right? Yes, there is a red button. We are recording. And um, yeah, I wish you a wonderful weekend. Please reach out. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how I can support you further. And I hope to see you next Saturday for the virtual retreat. And again, a big thank you, Melinda, Hannah, Kelly, and Barbara. You guys are amazing. Mwah. Thank you, guys.